thing. I actually finished watching um, the Resident Advisor documentary on Ukraine, Nightlife and Resistance. It was really, really good. I have to really, really, really say um, Resident Advisor did a really good job with it. Um, I only got kind of exposed or kind of understood the U Ukraine nightlife scene very late, to be honest, maybe a couple of years before the pandemic. So maybe like 2018, 2017, I kind of got an understanding of what Ukraine was about and sort of the scene out there in Kiev and whatnot. And I was planning on visiting there for a while. And I kind of followed some Instagram accounts about Closer and a few other clubs, clubs there out there in Flipping Kiev that did really good content. They kind of sold um, the place really well. So for my little techno tourism sort of thing i kind of had it on my list and literally just before the flipping pandemic happened and just before the flipping um war started with russia kind of trying to invade um ukraine i was planning on going that was kind of my next trip because i kind of felt like i exhausted the whole berlin thing and i wanted somewhere new and fresh to go to then of course the war spreads and you know that option completely you know is over but from afar it's been difficult to not kind of you know see some of the torment and the trauma and the horribleness has happened off the back of the war and just generally how people's lives have been changed forever and ever and it's been interesting to see how the nightlife scene in Kiev or in Ukraine overall has responded and it felt like the documentary did a really good way did a really good um did a really good uh did really well in terms of depicting like bravery with the people that lived there because a lot of them could have probably moved, which many did, and, you know, pursued their arts and stuff and continue their career, which no one would have blamed them. But a lot of them over there have decided to stay and kind of bear arms or be as useful as they can in terms of providing, you know, I don't know, protection, training, whatever it may be, um, food, all that good stuff. They've all kind of really rose to the challenge. And it really kind of, to me, kind of opened my eyes up to that and maybe kind of think to myself would i have done the same thing and i'm not really too sure and i think most of us probably wouldn't have if the kind of war kind of comes to your doorstep in your home country and you have the option to leave you have the funds and the means to go elsewhere i think most of us especially in the creative field considering how difficult it is to make a living or to get any sort of kind of momentum going within the creative field especially within like music electronic music to be specific it, you wouldn't you know no one would kind of no one would um, look down on you or look at you differently if you decided to kind of continue your career, especially if it was just about getting started. And there were a couple of people featured in this documentary who essentially had the same story where their career was just about, you know, just getting started. They were just feeling like they were getting some momentum, some wind behind their sails, and then boom, the war happens, and then your life gets turned upside down. But I also thought the documentary was really triumphant in that it kind of spoke a lot to you know the resolve of the human spirit and essentially the understanding that soon this sort of like you know horrible situation will pass but the kind of um, using nightlife and kind of dancing and raving and stuff as a way to sort of protest and there's also a way to kind of release from the daily torment that they're kind of going through and i feel like the end section of this show or the documentary kind of spoke to and i'm going to play it now but you can watch the whole thing yourself it's called ukraine nightlife and resistance courtesy of resident advisor but i'm going to play the last five minutes or so where they kind of round up some of the main people who are speaking on the documentary and kind of give their outlook on the future and what they kind of expect to happen so i'm going to actually lower the sound a bit so you can hear and i'm going to speak over so you can hear what you're saying People are the most important thing, this guy says. It's like we've dropped some weight. We've become like a balloon and flown to the sky. Happy, happiness, joy. And we've all been talking about the moment, the truth. Each war, each crisis and each revolution gives a massive cultural explosion. 
and I want to be part of it and to do my best for this explosion to become even more powerful because the war explosions were powerful too. I say that I'll come out of this war as a different person. I'd say that I'll come out of this war as a better person. So far I think so, everything can change. But at this stage I understand that overall this experience pumps me up. Now I'm ready for absolutely anything. And I know that as, as soon as the war is over, as soon as the first party comes, I'll be wearing my best outfit. And I know that I'll be dancing until the fall of the dance floor. And I'll just keep dancing while lying on the floor. Because we're free to be ourselves again. And we're free to live and it's a very important aspect of life. The genocide, this violence, this war, it can also give and it will give some new impulses. We'll probably have this all ahead and it's very interesting. But we need to win. It gives us weapons, long story short. Who's watching me? Give us weapons. <laughs> Since the time of the filming, the curfew has changed. It now begins at midnight. Daytime parties and festivals happen regularly, fundraising for the army, community, civilians, population and other war efforts. Russia's invasion of Ukraine continues. But yeah, um, so let's go again. the curfew will remain in place until the war is over. But yeah, I really enjoyed it, man. Really, really good documentary. Like I said, um, really kind of um, sobering to see people you know, within the same sort of age group that I'm in, in general, just kind of stepping up to the cause, um, stepping up where their country needs them the most, not running away and kind of essentially being part of the resistance and helping to basically piece together their communities that have been absolutely torn apart because of the war. Regardless of what your position of the war is, whether you think the invasion is just or not, whether you believe the propaganda, whether you think it's propaganda, regardless, just as people, I think it's really kind of encouraging to see people, you know, especially young people, deciding to kind of bear arms, people with absolutely no experience whatsoever, deciding to kind of go on the front line and fight for their country, fight for their quote unquote freedom, um, stand up for their people is absolutely amazing. Like that kind of patriotism, I don't think you could get in the UK. Like I think to myself, if anybody <laughs> invaded the UK and that shit happened, the amount of division that already exists, the amount of um, separate communities that aren't really in place and whatnot, um, I don't think you'd get any kind of unity on the front lines. The same way you didn't get any unity when it came to COVID, I don't think you're going to get anyone really deciding to kind of bear arms and kind of, you know, step up on to the plate on the front line and defend their position, defend their country, defend their loved ones. It wouldn't happen. People would just be adopting that, you know what, <laughs> I'm black, I'm not British, or I'm British, I'm not English type of, you know, rhetoric, which I'm sure would happen. But big up everybody there in Ukraine. Um, not left in resistance curse your ra check out it it's a really good documentary i recommend it only like 40 minutes long but it is a really good job um ra of kind of you know depicting that whole thing and giving it a really good ideal 